This home originally uh, was a hotel, a small hotel. It had 32 guest rooms and it was crying out to be saved when I found it uh, about four years ago. It had uh, decayed quite noticeably and was going to be torn down. And uh, I used to come over here in the evenings and look at the mountains and look at this beautiful structure. I felt that it was worth saving, so I bought it and I turned it into a private home. I find it very peaceful and serene, and I like to just come out here and sit during the lovely evenings, which are very balmy, incidentally. The climate here in Palm Springs is very mild, and at most times of the year, we have temperatures in the high 70s, the low 80s, even in the wintertime. The Chamber of Commerce insists that the uh, average temperature is 82 degrees. The cloisters is faced on one end by the master bedroom and on the other end by the shrine to St. Anthony. This is also a wonderful place to contemplate and find peacefulness. All the artifacts in this room come from churches that are now torn down. I found most of them at various auctions in Europe and around the country. The stained glass window, for example, is from Providence, Rhode Island. And since I live across the street from the Catholic Church, I am visited frequently by members of the church. And the entire house has been blessed by the local bishop. This is the bath. And the sound you hear in the background is the Whirlpool tub. It's a, a marvelous, relaxing, sort of therapeutic kind of bath. You can either use it without the Whirlpool or uh, with the Whirlpool, which I really enjoy. This champagne bubble bath, if you want bubbles. Since the room is uh, completely uh, surrounded by mirrors, you can see reflections wherever you look, reflections of the chandelier, the ferns. In fact, they go into infinity. The statue is from Rome, and it's made of white Carrara marble. This is the master bedroom at the Cloisters. Most of the furnishings in this room are French Empire and Louis XV. It has a vaulted ceiling, and uh, the most priceless possession in this room is the Louis XV desk, which was presented to Tsar Nicholas II of Russia, and on which the Franco-Russian alliance was signed. Most of the furnishings in this room were acquired through the purchase of a museum in Pensacola, Florida and the desk is uh, truly priceless, and uh, it is insured for $275,000. As you can see, the dogs have the run of the house. Everybody says you have two beds in your bedroom. Well, one of them's for the dogs, and the other's for me. And this is the gazebo. It's at the far end of the property, and it's a lovely place to have lunch under the grape arbor. When the grapes are in season, all you have to do is reach up and pick a bunch, and they're very sweet, seedless grapes. These are the director's chairs that I had made up last Christmas. Instead of putting uh, name cards on all the gifts, I had names put on the chairs in front of the gifts for all my guests and friends and family. And then when they took their gifts home, they took their chair with them. If I may be serious. We're in the uh, main dining room of the Cloisters. I call this the William Randolph Hearst room because most of the furnishings in here very closely resemble those in San Simeon, which was the residence of William Randolph Hearst. One afternoon I was visited by William Randolph, her son, and uh, he brought over some photographs of furnishings that he thought I might be interested in that would suit the architecture of this home. And when he showed me the pictures, they were almost identical to the furnishings that you see in this room. So I thanked him and said, I already had them. <laughs> It's a marvelous cabinet. Everyone says, how do you open it? Because there are no handles, and you just push it in like that. 
The glassware is from Czechoslovakia, but actually I bought it at Disney World in Orlando, Florida. The candelabras are from a Spanish church. I have a pair of them, one on either side of the fireplace. This is perhaps one of the largest silver plateaus that I've ever seen anywhere in the world. Here's a marvelous cabinet I found in the East. It's from Italy, and uh, it serves a, a lovely purpose. When we're dining, we want to watch TV. Frank, how much do you reckon to want, Mr. Howard? Well, if it's convenient, I could use a hundred dollars. I guess we could all use a hundred dollars. <laughs> You'll notice uh, the paintings all have a sort of a religious significance because of the religious architecture of this house and the fact that it's called the cloisters. Down below we have some buffet serving pieces. I serve a lot of buffets as well as sit-down dinners. And of course everywhere you look there are candelabras naturally. When I serve a buffet I have some French porcelain menu markers that look like this and then with a marking pen I mark the various dishes that I'm serving. I bet you thought it was another piano. Actually, it's a refrigerator and a freezer. This is the kitchen in my guest house, and it's very musical, as you see. We've, turns out, we've turned out some real symphonic food in this kitchen.